better just watch it. Some guys are flawed and not flawless. They'll have you dropping them laws. It behoove you to take caution. The truth to you is nonsense. And the way you live is a nuisance. We drop the jewels from your two cents. When it's said and done, you looking stupid. Yes, indeedy. Shalom, shalom. And actually, for the first time, probably, the song title is basically, well, not the title, but the subject of the song is the same as the subject of what we're going to talk about. That's a song called Why. That's my brother, His Kiyahu, and featuring myself, brother Yaakov, Woodrow, Willie Rock, whatever one, rolls out the tongue. That's something we did a while ago, but it's definitely relevant to right now. That's what we're about to talk about, so let's get into it. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 15. He that justifieth the wicked, and he that condemneth the just, even they both are abomination unto Yahuwah. God's word translation says it like this. Whoever approves of wicked people, and whoever condemns righteous people is disgusting to Yahuwah, the Most High. Let's go to the Amplified Bible. He who justifies the wicked and he who condemns the righteous are both repulsive to Yahuwah. Repulsive, just disgusting. This is Proverbs 17 and 26. Also to punish the just is not good, nor to strike princes for equity. Contemporary English version says it like this. It isn't fair to punish the innocent and those who do right. Proverbs 18 and 5. It is not good to accept the person of the wicked to overthrow the righteous in judgment. Amplified Bible says to show respect to the wicked person is not good, nor to push aside and deprive the righteous of justice. Psalm 82 and 2. How long will ye judge unjustly and accept the person of the wicked? Selah. Amplified Bible. How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Selah. Psalms 4 verses 2 and 3. O ye sons of men, how long will ye turn my glory into shame? How long will ye love vanity? And seek after leasing, Selah. But know that Yahuwah has set apart him that is godly for himself. Yahuwah will hear when I call unto him. Amplified Bible. O sons of men, how long will my honor be a reproach? My honor and glory be turned into shame? How long will my enemies love worthless, vain, futile things? 
and seek deception and lies. Say lie. But know that Yahuwah, the Most High, has set apart for himself and dealt wonderfully with the godly man, the one of honorable character and moral courage, the one who does right. Yahuwah hears and responds when I call to him. Hold on one second. Proverbs 30, verses 7 through 9. Two things have I required of thee. Deny me not them before I die. Remove from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. Lest I be full and deny thee and say, Who is Yahuwah? Or lest I be poor and steal and profane the name of my mighty one. That comes from Proverbs chapter 30, and it's a portion called the sayings of Agur, the son of Jake. And it says in the New Living Translation, O Elohim, I beg two favors from you. Let me have them before I die. First, help me never to tell a lie. Second, give me neither poverty or riches. Give me just enough to satisfy my needs. For if I grow rich, I may deny you and say, Who is Yahuwah? Who is the Most High? And if I am too poor, I may steal and thus insult Elohim's holy name. And I think I said this before because I think I'm pretty sure we touched on this um, passage before. But before I started working, I was it was a period of time where as though I was in between careers, like between doing the music thing that I was doing before and then going into what I do now, just some regular nine to five stuff. But the point of it is I wasn't doing any I was basically just taking gigs. Like whenever somebody would call me and say, Okay, we got this play going on or okay we got an artist over here that could use some help in the studio with vocal production or whatever or just come over here and sing at this wedding, come over here and sing at this engagement, whatever the engagement might be. And I found myself taking engagements and taking on projects that pretty much didn't sit well with my spirit just to be able to pay the bills. And right when that was going on, right after one that really didn't sit well with my spirit, but my justification was this is what's paying the bills. This is what's putting foods on the table or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I was doing it. But right after one that really didn't sit well with my spirit. Now we talked about this, I'm sure. I was turning through the book. And like I said on last week, my sister told me, shout out to her again. What up, Nick? Told me that like if you ever don't know what to read or what to look for when you're reading the Bible, but you just want to read. She was like, just open it up. And nine times out of ten, something on the page you open up to. It's something that you're going to need to see. And I open up to this where it said, don't make me basically so rich that I feel like that I don't need the most high for anything. But at the same time, don't let me become so poor that in order to eat or in order to survive, I feel like I have to do anything. And some of the things I might do might cause me to bring shame to the name of the Heavenly Father. That's why I brought that up. And when he said, remove from me the vanity and lies, lines up with what we were saying, reading in the psalm where he was saying, um, how long will you seek after vanity and lies? Because that's what a lot of people do, you know. So, let's go on to Ecclesiastes 21 and 5, just to show, once again, because a lot of times people shame people for being poor. And there is, you know, like, there's another scripture that I love in Ecclesiastes because it says there's nothing shameful about being rich if you didn't sin to get that way. And there's also nothing sinful about being poor. Only the ungodly think so. But there is, you know, like, definitely survival. When you go into survival mode, you might do anything just for the sake of getting a meal. You see what I'm saying? We don't want to be bored to that point. Because the thing we might do might become like the brother Jacob in the Bible, Esau, who basically sold his birthright, sold all the blessings that he was supposed to get from his father upon his father's death for a bowl of soup. And we don't want to be brought to that way as though we sell off and give away things that are imperative to us or very important for us to have 
just because of poverty. See what I'm saying? But on the flip side, I always like to bring this out too. There are advantages to being poor. If, you know, if that's the word we want to use. And here it is. This is Ecclesiasticus 21 and 5. A prayer out of a poor man's mouth reacheth the ears of Elohim, and his judgment cometh speedily. That does sink in. Common English Bible. The petition of the poor goes from their mouth to Elohim's ear. You ever hear people say that from, from my mouth to God's ears? Who they say that happened for? The poor man. It says, and his judgment cometh quickly. One more. Ecclesiasticus chapter 4 verses 5 and 6. Turn not away thine eye from the needy and give him none occasion to curse thee. But if he curse thee out of the bitterness of his soul, his prayer shall be heard of him that made him. So, good news translation. Don't refuse to help a beggar who is in distress. Don't turn your back on a poor person or give him any reason to curse you. If he becomes so bitter that he does curse you, his creator will hear his prayer. So, let's be careful how we treat people that we consider poor or we consider to be beneath us. Because you never know what a relationship that they might have with the most high. It might trump anything that we thought we knew. You see what I'm saying? Far beyond our understanding sometimes. Let's be careful of that. This is Second Timothy chapter 3 verses 1 through 5. Getting back on to the original topic that we started talking about. This says, This know also... That in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of them their own selves, covetous boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, head traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of Elohim. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. <clears throat> Amplified Bible says it like this. Difficult times will come. But understand this, that in the last days, dangerous times of great stress and trouble will come. Difficult days that will be hard to bear. Matthew twenty four twenty two even goes so far as to say. Hold on, let me get it and tell you what it goes so far as to say. It says, and except these days should be shortened, there shall be no flesh saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. New Living Translation. In fact, unless that time of calamity is shortened, not a single person will survive. But it will be shortened. For the sake of Elohim's chosen ones. Let's get back to, <clears throat> excuse me, where we were. For people, verse 2, for people will be lovers of self, narcissistic. And that's a, a heavy topic that everybody talking about these days. And sure enough, the book predicted that that was going to happen. Self-focused, lovers of money, impelled by greed, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, and profane. And they will be unloving, devoid of human affection, callous, and inhumane. Even I feel numb sometimes, you know, and, and I hate to say it because I just talked about it, but, like, I used to get into debates with certain family members, beloved family members, like, not nobody that you just show up and just argue with like somebody that you really love because of the fact that and it's not bragging on myself at all i used to always want to give to anybody i saw that was less fortunate or appeared to be less fortunate i see somebody outside begging or whatever and i just go in my pocket and pull out whatever i had big bills or whatever and just give it to them and certain family members be like oh boy you don't know you know some of these people got Benzes around the corner or whatever, you know, or, or living good or whatever, and that's they hustle. They come out every day and do this type of stuff, and I used to be like, look, let that be between them and the most high, you know, and I'm going to give as long as I got it, I'm going to give. 
these days, you give something to some, not all, but you give something to some people that appear to be less fortunate, and they will basically just, like, show you, give you, for lack of better words, like, they behind the kiss for real. Like, I remember one time I gave, I was standing outside of McDonald's while I was walking. A buddy of mine and I were walking, and we walked past McDonald's, and the lady was like, can you help me get something to eat? I didn't have much change on me. I had a dollar bill, so I gave it to her, and they had 99 cent menu or whatever. And she looked right at me, took the money, ain't say thank you or nothing, like, just, and just looked at my homeboy and was like, look, you might as well take this dollar and give me a five, you know? Or you give them what you can give them. They're like, oh, if you could just give me this much more, I could do this. I'm like, me personally, I don't have any children. So it's not my responsibility to take care of anybody or to feed anybody. I do the best I can because I want somebody to do the best I can for me. It's on my understanding that pennies make dollars. So it's like if you can get some from this person, then you get some from this person over here, and then you put together all of what you got, and then you can do what you can do. A person only can do what they can do, you know? So it's like I pray that I'm never in that position, but I would like to think, and I know for a fact that you can never say what you're going to do. In any situation unless you're in that situation so i pray that i'm never i never had to find out but i would like to think that if one person gave me something i would in no way try to make them feel bad or any kind of negative way about what they gave me you see what i'm saying be grateful for that and then hope when the next person come along they can add to it even in that situation she could have asked my buddy to add to it without basically insulting what i gave you see what i'm saying you know, I ain't had to say, oh, you can take this dollar. This ain't nothing. You see what I'm saying? Or some people, you give them something and they don't even, like, remember on, I think it was a scary movie when the um, man person said he was hungry and the um, character gave him a sandwich and they threw the sandwich and hit her in her back and was like, B-I-X for a dollar. It's like, that was a movie and that was funny, but it's like real life now. Like, the lady might as well bought that doll up and threw it upside my head for real. Like, B, I asked to get something to eat. What I'm supposed to do with this? That was basically the sentiment. And, you know, I had to check myself constantly and not to allow myself to become hard-hearted because of the actions of one or two people. But sometimes it's tough, you know, especially when you're an empath and you, as, like I am, and you internalize emotions, you know, and you sense emotions. Not even so much what somebody says, but the spirit in which they say it. Or not so much what someone does, but the spirit in which they do it. So, as I read these verses and stuff like that, week in and week out, when I read stuff and I bring stuff to everybody's attention who takes the time to watch, it's for me to trust and believe and know that. So, I had to remind myself of these things not to become callous, just like we just read in Inhumane. Off the deeds of one or two people, or off the deeds of sometimes many people. Because there's always one person out there that will appreciate whatever you can give. I just saw a meme where somebody asked someone, like some content creator on Instagram, if they could help them out financially. And they were like, Which, it would a penny help? And the person's like, I will take anything I can get. And as a result of that person being that grateful and being that, you know, willing to take whatever the person had to offer, they actually blessed them with a substantial amount of money. So, you know, it is still a blessing in being humble, still a blessing in being patient and, you know, understanding that people are doing what they can do. You never know the next person's situation. Somebody could be dressed up from head to toe. I seen another meme that said it. it's people that be geared up from head to toe and homeless. They self. So you never know what position somebody in when you're asking them to help you. That might be their last that they're giving you. And for you to basically defecate on it, whatever they're giving you, it's like, man, you know? But I digress. Let's get back into it. Verse 3 again. And they will be unloving, devoid of natural human affection, calloused, and inhumane. Malicious gossips. Gotta stop again. Because I've definitely experienced that. And it's not about me all the time, but since I am the one reading and talking, I'm going to take this second. i uh, tell you this about myself. I've never had a driver's license in my life. I've always caught public transportation or even gotten a ride by 
a friend or somebody in my family. It was a point where I did have a car, but even during that time, I had the car for probably like five years. I drove it once, and I only drove it to 7-Eleven around the corner from me, and I didn't even drive it home because I just know myself. I have a very short attention span for things I'm not interested in. If I'm interested in something, I'd be on point with it all day long. But it's something that I'm not interested in, and driving never interested me. Even when I was young, when little children used to point at cars, like, that's my car. Oh, there go my car. That's my car right there. I never engaged in that. I was busy trying to learn the lyrics to some song or something. So I never really cared about driving. So I've never driven. And as a result, at my age that I am now, I'm, I'm Uber, I think, and Lyft are pretty happy with me. You know, sometimes I might opt to take the public public transportation. The, the bus or whatever. You see what I'm saying? And one day that I was on a bus stop, a young lady came up to me and started talking to me. This was years ago now. And she snuck and took a picture of me that I didn't even know she was taking. And posted it online with a whole long story about how sad it was that I was catching a bus. Whereas though anybody who knew me already, already knew that it was enough. It would be nothing to see me on the bus. And if you and you know if you live in different cities, maybe not my city, but if you live in New York, I seen pictures of like J Cole and Keanu Reeves, like big Hollywood names, on public with stuff out at the current time or whatever on public transportation. But certain people are small minded, and they saw that as being something to be ridiculed. And next thing I know, I was getting all these notifications, people hitting me from all over the place, like, have you seen this? Have you seen this? And the picture, I was, out of all of it, I was more concerned that the picture was taken when I was exhaling, and it was the winter time, my hibernation months, where I don't really do much exercise and I just eat. And I was just upset that, like, you could have waited until I sucked my stomach, breathed in, so my stomach could have went in, because I looked like the, um, bear necessities, that the bear. That's how my belly looks sitting out. I was mad about that. But <clears throat> from that, people who call themselves journalists, wanting to be up-and-coming journalists and stuff like that around the city, they started reposting it, and everybody had opinions and stuff like that. And it was just wild to me because I'm like, this is something, this is a regular everyday thing. You know, like the same with, not just me even, the same with um, the guy who played this Elvin on the Cosby show. He was working a nine to five and somebody thought it would be cool to take his picture and put it up. You know, stupid stuff. They, you had to be wherever I was to see me. Like the person that took the picture of me getting on the bus was right on there, right with me. So, and I never knew that catching the bus was something to be ashamed of, but they did it with malicious intent. They put it up to make people laugh and they ended up, you know, turning into people with sense speaking up and like, well, who was so bad about that? What was embarrassing about that? What did you think you was going to accomplish by doing that to the point where the person apologized, just like the person who took the picture of um, the actor who played Elvin ended up apologizing and feeling real stupid, you know, but it's just the fact that people even think to do stuff like that just to shame or embarrass somebody. And I have confessions because I've seen pictures that were taken without somebody's knowing and posting and people make jokes about it. I might have laughed at a few, but... Sometimes the most high will let something happen to you so you can see how it feels so that you won't do it anymore. Like, I never would take a picture of anybody and post it, but I'd probably have laughed at a couple. But after that, I don't find that type of stuff funny at all. And neither does the good book because it says malicious gossips. <laughs> you know, gossiping with bad intent. Gossip is never good, but when you're doing it with bad intent to hurt someone or to make somebody look bad or shame someone or whatever the case may be, it's never a good thing. Devoid of self-control. Intemperate. Immoral. Brutal. Haters of good. There's people who hate the ones that's trying to do good just for no reason. Like, oh, who he think he is? He going to college. College. He's speaking proper English. Sounding white. You know, like anything that you do that you thinking that is... Something positive is somebody that just don't like it just because it's positive. Because they, what you think, you better than me? What you think, you better than all us? You think you smarter than me? Just, I don't get it, but the book said it was going to happen, and we definitely have it going on. Traitors. People that's your friend one minute, next minute they friends with your enemies and letting out all your 
secrets and all your business and stuff like that. Reckless. That's a lot of reckless behavior going on these days. Conceited. We just talked about narcissists. Lovers of sensual pleasure rather than lovers of Elohim. People want to do all type of wild stuff. And they'll definitely put that before the Most High. Because when you say the Most High don't like when you do X, Y, Z. Ah, whatever, whatever. And they go do it anyway. Holding to a form of godliness, outward godliness, religion. Although they have denied the power. For their conduct nullifies their claim of faith. Like you claim you love the Most High, but you're doing everything you say not to do. And also like that. You deny the power thereof, like when people make books like, or subscribe to things like The Secret and all that stuff. Basically biblical principles, but they just take the most high out of it. And that's the most important part that makes everything work. Like, that's the key that make the car start, make the car run. You don't got the key, you can't go nowhere. Can't do what they say, with, um, without him, we could do nothing. For real. They said, avoid such people. And keep far away from them. I get close to him because you see him with a couple of dollars or flashing some money. Or because you see him getting live females if you're a guy or if you're a lady, whatever. Ladies like to see somebody do that to make them draw close to them. You know, I'm not a lady, so I can't really speak. And I don't know. And I'm not ashamed to say I don't know. Still learning. Isaiah 29 and 13. Wherefore, Yahuwah said, for as much as these people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear from toward me is taught by the precept of men. Amplified Bible. Then Yahuwah said, Because this nation approaches me with their words and honors me only with their lip service, but they remove their hearts far from me, and their reverence for me is a tradition that is learned by root without any regard for its meaning. Let's see what root means. Root, mechanical or habitual repetition of something to be learned, is the use of memory, usually with very little intelligence, learned by root. And sorry to say, but a lot of times that's what we do in school. We learn by root. We just learn what the teacher tells us. And if you even ask questions that can't understand it or you don't agree with something or don't understand something, you ask a question, sometimes you get looked at as being disruptive and disrespectful when really you're just trying to get understanding rather than just be a parent and just repeat something that somebody tell you. So you might ask them to elaborate and be a little more specific on some stuff. They look at you like you you making trouble because you just don't take everybody word for everything. Mechanical or unthinking routine repetition, joyless sense of order, root and commercial hustle. That's the definition of root by the Merriam Webster Dictionary. So let's go to one more verse. This is Isaiah 5 and 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness. That put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Amplified Bible. Woe, judgment is coming to those who call evil good and good evil, who substitute darkness for light and light for darkness, who substitute bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Let's get the definition of woe. Like y'all, uh, last year, I can't say y'all, but a lot of people last year, so a couple years ago, I don't remember exactly. Love to sing that song, Drake riding through the six with the woes and calling their friends they woes and stuff like that. Let's see what a woe really is. It said, woe, noun, literally, great sorrow or distress. They had a complicated tale of woe, similar, misery, sorrow, distress. I don't want my friends to be woes. I want my friends to be misery, add misery, sorrow, and distress to me. Say things that cause sorrow or distress, troubles. Another thing of calling something that's bad good. That woe is bad. And we call it to our friends like it's something good. That's what we talking about. Going to them to call evil good and good evil. It's funny that woe is right in that same sentence. 
It says, this is a site called askinglot.com. Y'all can look that up and pull it up yourself and look at it. What does the word woe mean in the Bible? It says, to say woe unto someone, or more commonly, woe betide someone, was originally a form of curse, meaning may bad things happen to someone. It said, but to protect ourselves from that, I don't like reading nothing about curses without bringing a flip side to it. So just be careful with words we repeat and stuff, and be careful with that one, especially on call your friends no woes, because you don't want to bring no hurt and harm and misery to yourself. And you don't want to have people around you to bring you hurt, hurt, harm, and misery. Maybe some friends are wolves. <laughs> and that's the, the cue to let them go. Let them wolves go. This is Proverbs 26 and 2. As the bird by wandering, and as the swallow by flying, so the curse causeless shall not come. Good news translation. Curses cannot hurt you unless you deserve them. They are like birds that fly by and never light. New Living Translation, like a fluttering sparrow or a darting swallow, an undeserved curse will not land on its intended victim. Let's get one more, and we good for this time. This is Proverbs twenty six twenty seven. Whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein, and he that rolleth a stone, it shall return upon him. Good News Translation, people who set traps for others get caught themselves. Excuse me. People who start landslides get crushed. I like how that sounds. Amplified Bible. Whoever digs a pit for another man's feet will fall into it. And he who rolls a stone up a hill to do mischief, it shall come back on him. So be careful when you try to roll a stone on somebody else and cause trouble for somebody else. Because eventually, ultimately, you're going to hurt yourself. And before we go, let's just go over... That last verse, which is going to be the title of this, this is Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 20. And it goes like a little something like this. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put light, darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Amplified Bible. Woe, judgment is coming to those who call evil good and good evil. Who substitute darkness for light and light for darkness. Who substitute bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. So just, just be careful because everything is being turned upside down these days. All the things that really are good, people are frowning upon. And all the stuff that should be frowned upon, people are calling good. And calling the people crazy who calling it for what it is. So let's just be watchful and prayerful in these times. May the most high blessing keep us Y'all in me, because we all need it. Shalom, most high willing, we'll see each other again real soon.